Good morning. I'm Rita Santa Maria. I'm the owner founder of Champion School of Real Estate. And as you know, as our wonderful valued customers, students, every month we do an amazing YouTube introduction interview with one of our longtime students. And so many of you have had classes with Alan Hancock, our 39-year teacher veteran. And in a recent class, Alan reached out to me and said, you must interview Art Garza. He's from the Tyler Lefkin area, is what he told me. And this man is a dynamo. He just is going into his, I want to say, fifth year. Starting my fifth. Starting your fifth. And when you hear his story today, you're going to be as inspired as I am. So thank you, Alan Hancock, for recommending Art Garza. His license is with Keller Williams Tyler, but that is not where Art lives. And I'm just going to stop there and say, welcome, Art. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Was... This man just travels and does so much in real estate in all different venues. How many miles a day do you travel? What areas do you cover? And what parts of real estate do you sell? Okay, so the last, the six month average for the last six months, I average 300 plus miles a day. Every 28 days I had 10,000 miles. Uh, I work about a 52 zip code area, which spans basically from just south of Tyler all the way down almost to the Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, back over to, to Louisiana and then back towards Livingston. So it's 52 zip codes and it's a huge area, but on any given day, I might drive 400 miles. So I just have to say, how in the world did you decide or why did you decide to cover so many miles? Well, it's kind what of, happened? yeah, most agents specialize, they stay in their hometown or home area. I, my clients dictate where I go. So I'll get a client from, from out of state, out of area, which is about 80 or 90% of who I deal with, out of state, out of area. And once I connect with them, we might start looking at a house in Lufkin. And then I ask them, where do you want to go? And they said, we don't know East Texas. And I said, well, let's see if we can find you a property. And we just start looking. We get on the map and we start looking and we find them a property. And it might be 100 miles away. And we start that away. So that, that leads to the driving. Uh, and I go wherever they need me to go. Well, I hope our students heard you say you're driving over 300 miles a day. Every 28 days, you get an oil change. <laughs> and um, when you and I talked, you had mentioned that you sell residential, mm -hmm. you sell farm and ranch, you sell raw right. land, you sell lake property, you have sold restaurant, marina, um, it just goes on and on and on. So what is it like when you're talking with a buyer and they say, well, I think I'd like to look at some farm and ranch? Do you start within your particular area or is there a farm and ranch property that you thought, gosh, they need to see this one? So this is going to sound odd and it's not going to be normal when you hear this. I don't search for the properties. They do. With today's technology, they get on their phone, they find it. I say, you know what you want. You just give me the area or, or any, any type of listing that you see. And then I'll, most of my clients aren't with me. They're sitting at home. Okay. I'm going to make the drive. I'm going to make the video. Okay. So if they want to look at something in Henderson, I'm going to drive all the way to Henderson. I'm going to make all the videos, send them back to them. They say they like it. They like it. They fly out. Then we do a contract. Or we do a contract for the come. So I, I don't I don't have time. I don't see the computer looking at properties for them. Okay. Why? Because they do the looking. So you said to me, buyers today are so sophisticated. Yes. They're looking all the mm -hmm. time. And how did you get into doing video? Do you have that background or? No, ma'am. And, and the thing about it, it's so hard to please them. Uh, me pushing a property on them makes them uncomfortable. So when they find it, 
I go get it. But the video thing came about. Uh, we tried FaceTime and we tried everything. The virtual tours showed up and everybody was doing virtual, but they're staged and they're to sell a house. I make a video to show them the house. So once I started doing them, uh, I just got better and better at them. And, and it really, it takes about six or eight videos. They're two minutes. If I go longer than two minutes, they won't download. So they're two minute videos or oh, six or eight of them. Okay. And in 12 minutes, I'll cover an entire property. Everything from the driveway uh, to driving out. Uh, and I, I, I talk fast and I walk fast. Uh, but literally, I'll go through a 2,000 square foot house and tell you every room size, every ceiling height, every material in that house. What's on the roof? What's in the attic? What kind of breaker box has got before I get out of that house? And you said you are, I don't want to say strictly a buyer's agent, but mm -hmm. you have more buyers and that is your your focus. Yes, ma'am. So from the time I got into real estate, I, I heard the, the, the studies and you need to be balanced. You need to be 70-30, 50-50. You need to pursue listings, and I, I have pursued zero listings since I got into real estate. I'm 100% buyer. It has led to listings, but all I focus on is leads and buyers. Uh, it has brought me listings, but I do not do anything. I don't advertise. I don't Facebook. I don't anything. So you are doing the videos and sending. Are you doing outgoing prospecting with your videos to potential buyers? How do you get your leads? No, ma'am. All my leads are live. They're, they're, they're live people that are looking and interested enough to ask a question about a property. So I don't solicit anyone. Uh, again, I don't send anything to anybody. Nobody's on a drip. I don't send them anything. If someone calls me uh, through the lead pro process that I pay for, I pay for my leads, and they ask about a property, I take off. I mean, I got two calls this morning. And uh, one of them's either going to be a video or they're close enough to drive to come see the property. I've already sent my message back to them. It's a standard process. I send them a business card, tell them who I am. How can I help you? And it goes from there. Now, once I get them on the phone uh, and we actually talk, uh, they, they get a feel for what I know. And then I say, all right, I'm going to you sit still. I'll go shoot videos. They like that mm -hmm. because they'll drive from Houston or Dallas three or four hours to get here and look at one house sometimes. And I said, that's not very efficient for you. You stay home. I make videos. And then when you get ready to come, they've already seen the videos. They're ready to buy. They're coming to verify what they've seen on the videos or like a lot of them, they'll buy it off the video. So they'll make a contract, or make an offer. So do a lot of your buyers come from the Texas area, out of state, half and half? So I would say, yes, yes ma'am, I do. I, I, 60, 60, 70 percent are, uh, are out of state and then total probably 80 or 90 percent of who I do is out of area. In other words, none of them. I'm not ever dealing with a local client. Uh, They're moving from Houston, Dallas, sometimes Austin or California, Las Vegas, New York. I, if I, I didn't total the states, but I probably sold to probably 25 different states other than Texas. Wow. And they... Predominantly from the West that they come and uh, they're inquiring and they want to come to East Texas. They love the rolling hills and the pine trees. And when they see the pictures, they want to move here. That's it. So you openly told me you're eh, 52, 53 years old. And uh, you made this career change only like four years, though, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, you had worked up in a company um, doing all of those wonderful things that you do when you are salaried with benefits. And one day things went a different direction and you just said, well, I'm going to go over, stay with my daughter and Colleen. She was there was she going through basic training or something? She was a nurse for the uh, Fort Hood. She oh, she worked, was a she nurse already for, uh, in Fort Hood. Mm -hmm. So what happened at that point? You Was your wife like, are you crazy? My You're wife was petrified. drive over to yeah. Colleen and go to real estate school? So, you know, I'd spent 31 years with one company, and I had uh -huh. an impeccable record. 31 years without ever missing a day's work or ever calling me a nurse. Without missing a never day's work. Never missing a day's work in 31 years in one month. Uh, wow. Made a, a good career move. I bumped up in the company and then it happened as you hear about it. I lost my job. 
for whatever reasons. And my backup plan was real estate. I'd already been uh, thinking about it and wanting to do it on the side. Uh, the day I lost my job, I called my wife when I was walking out of the mill and she said, what are we going to do? I said, I'm going to sell real estate. You know, and not, I think I'm going didn't to hesitate. It was, I'm going I'm to gonna sell do real it. estate. I love that. And as we talked, you know, that was, uh, and, and basically late in the year in 19 <clears throat> and I did, I, I didn't think it was abnormal until my broker said, you can't get your license that fast. Well, I got my license in 28 days. That's with a 10 day waiting period. Three days between some of the classes, one day to test, 14 days of class, 28 days I had a license. And I, oh, I wow. went out and stayed in Colleen and drove to Round Rock to the class because I heard Champions was the best school. That's what my broker said. They are the best. And I said, I want the best. Wow. So Thank I went to you. what I felt like was the best school. Thank you to your broker. Yeah. I want you to also tell them about in the classes, you took a little more time with the final exam oh, yeah. in the classes. Yes. Go into that. And then what happened <laughs> so with the prep? I was 53 years old and I hadn't been in school for quite a few years. So I had to learn how to practice uh, studying for these tests because you had to pass the course and realize I went from a, a financial security to no income. So this had to work. It has. So I had to pass the course. Yes. So once I got my little study methods down, every time we took a test, there'd be 60 people in there because the rooms were packed in 2019. Uh, last one to leave every time, almost the last one, every time I tested slow, so slow. And John McCardo, I think I had him four or five times. He was brilliant. As far as prepping for the exam. A shout John, out to you, John Mercado. He is the best. Uh, so I did, he recommended, they recommend you do three prep courses. I did one prep course with John and I had made some friends in there and we were all testing the prep test. And what's amazing is I, I just, I got through and I went to stand up and the guy beside me said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm done. He said, you can't be done. I said, yeah, I was the first one to finish. He ran it through the scanner and I think I got, uh, I know I got 98 out of a hundred questions, right? Fantastic. John, John said, go test. <laughs> right and I went and tested, Run, right now went and test the next day and, and uh I passed I don't know what I made it didn't matter I passed exactly. and the journey began and the journey began so you moved from Orange Texas to the Toledo Bend area yes so and you said there were so many brokerages mm -hmm. in Toledo Bend that you moved out in the country so, uh, you know, we, we knew we were going to have to relocate. So we actually bought an RV and moved the RV up to the lake. I had a lake lot up there and we moved it up to my camp to sell lake property. That's I'm good on the lake, good on the rivers. And there was so much competition up there. And, and you know, I, I bought my first, I started buying leads December 26th. I uh, had my first closing on February 14th. So it started happening fast. And it was lake property. It was a big the $6,800 check. I got it framed. It's hanging on the wall love in that it. house. I love it. it. It was good money. I said, this is good. Uh, but that was at the lake, but there was so much competition. Uh, there was 10 brokers in one little town and I knew that that wasn't going to feed me. I knew already from the start that this wasn't going to be enough. So I started buying more zip codes and started expanding and getting wider and wider. And uh, by June of that year, I was spending a grand a month uh, in less than six months, but you know, buying I, leads, buying leads. That's all I did was buy leads. That's still all I do today is buy leads. Mm -hmm. But the driving started then because I had obviously I'm covering more area. Uh, and eventually we moved over back over to Sam Braver and closer to Lufkin, uh, kind of central to where my area is. Now mm -hmm. I'll drive anywhere within that location uh, to cover all my zip codes. Well, I'm going to read some statistics here that you told me. You have five, uh, you have 367 real estate agents in yes. your contact list. You have 52 zip codes that you work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you work them consistently, 52 zip okay. codes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have closed properties in 21 counties. Mm -hmm. And it just truly is mind boggling. But there is a wonderful moment right here that I want to make a statement. And that is 
Art Garza is doing a certain niche or niche, whichever you want to, mm-hmm. way you want to pronounce it, <laughs> that has worked for him to the point that his first year in business, he was number one in the company, second year in business, number one in the company as a new person. I'm just truly impressed and taken with the fact that doing business in a smaller area, mm-hmm. how did the buying leads come about? And do you mind telling new people, how do you buy leads? So, you, you know, there's so much information out there that talk about buying leads or yes. cold calling. So December, I went to the Christmas party for that office and we were still, I wasn't doing any real estate. I went to the Christmas party and my broker said, you got, uh, he gave me 676 old leads. He said, here, I printed them out. Start calling these people. I said, okay. He said, or you can buy leads. So December 26, I purchased my, I bought into Zillow and I spent $146 a month. It's a six month contract for one point. I said, I can spend 150 a month. And immediately I got a call and it was a big lake house and I closed on that February 14th. So did I make those 700 calls? Not a one. Still to this day, I've never you got made a new fresh call. I've never new made a cold leads. call and I've never, and I, I don't tell people not to do that. Anytime mm-hmm. we have new agents come in, I tell them, don't, don't follow me. I'm just going to tell you what I did. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, those plans are perfect and they work well. But You know, Art, you made a really um, excellent statement about when you work with buyers, you never talk about your commission. Right. Go into that discussion. So it's so good to hear. It's what I learned in the business. I was, for first of all, I had my impression of what real estate was, and it was totally not what I thought. When I showed up, I said, This is not what it looks like on television. It wasn't all glamorous. It wasn't, uh, it just wasn't. Uh, and I knew that when I learned immediately, the whole objective is, is if somebody's going to buy a house, somebody's going to sell a house, and there's people involved. And when those people became my priority and, and all I want to do is to serve them, I let them know immediately I work for them. When I write a contract, I'll find out what the commission is then. I never look at a commission. I never I never cash a check uh, until I leave the, the, the title company. Then I cash mm-hmm. a check. I don't try to make money off my clients. I work for my clients. Uh, I make a lot of sacrifices for them. You said you never talk about what's in it for you. Right. It's, it, I never mentioned to a client uh, anything that would benefit me. It has to be totally selfless. I have to be out of the scenario. They have to be the priority. And I not only talk that, I show them that. Mm-hmm. And I let them know what I'll do for them. I, I, help, I told you on my first listing, I got sitting in a, in a restaurant and a guy seen my logo on my shirt. He seen I was a realtor and it struck up a conversation. Next thing you know, I'm listing his lake house. And when we closed on that house, we had... Uh, a house and a guest house and he had to get out by like the next morning and I went over there to check on him and they weren't done so we worked uh, 56 straight hours I loaded low boys and drove trailers and drove haul, loaded U-Hauls to get him moved to his house 110 miles away Unbelievable. so uh, that's the kind of commitment that you know most people say well I'm not going to do that so, and they didn't ask me to do that you I volunteered that right when that. I found out they were in a bind I went to him, and the next morning, or actually the, the day and a half later, when the, the new owners were moving into the house, the guy pulls in, and he says, y'all got it all moved. I, said, I was still hauling the last load. Jeez. He said, you got it all moved. I said, yes, sir, we did. That was the seller, I mean the buyer of the, buyer new, house. Of the new house. And he says, hey, give me your number. He says, I want to look for some land around here. So already he impre- was impressed with Absolutely. me, and, wow. and uh, he wanted to buy some land along with the house. So it just he led had to move out in a short period of time. So keep the buyers happy. And you said you worked day and night, 56 mm-hmm. hours to get that seller totally moved out. So buyers could move in. I can't even imagine the impression that that made on the buyers. Mm-hmm. And absolutely it, it worked. You're yeah. out showing them land after the fact. But um, do you feel like, Art, that in today's world, sometimes maybe the agent needs to 
kind of do what you're doing and move around a little bit more and let the potential buyers like stay in California, stay in Houston. You're doing all the legwork and then you say, here's what's available, here's what's available. Now come and see it. Do you feel like that that's where we're going down the road 100%? Or is that just because of the area that you're working in? Well, sphere of influence. So I started real estate, moved 100 miles north. I knew nobody. If you have a big sphere of influence and you know 5,000 people in a uh, a town of 100,000, you're probably going to do okay. But if you don't have that, you don't have anything. So the only way to do it for me was to, I knew that I was going to have to move around because I, and I still hardly know anybody. I don't, I don't have to know them. I know that now. I thought I was going to have to, I was going to have to join every club and every group in the area, but I've joined nothing. I've done Instead, it. you're showing people all over the world mm-hmm. what Art Garza at Keller Williams, Tyler, your brokerage, what you have available. Mm-hmm. And then they look at that and then contact you. You know, you also made a really valid point for everybody that's new. Well, if you're a a potential buyer from someplace, you don't know who the longtime agents are. You just know what this guy is doing for you. That's a fine job. It's, you know, I've had clients uh, that, you usually don't get them pick you out. I've had them pick me out. They said, we looked on the map and we looked at all of the areas. And when you look on a map to see where I sold, it covers a lot of area. It, it, it spreads out and they go, my like God. 300 you... miles a day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and they said, you move around us. And some referrals come to me from other agents. They go, we could tell you move around. I said, yes, I do. Uh, I go all over the place. Uh, and you got to think, I, I try to think like my buyer and I try to think like my seller. If I'm buying and I only want to live in Nacogdoches, I'm limited to just Nacogdoches. Mm-hmm. If I tell you, where do you want to live? And they go, we don't know yet. We just want to move to East Texas. I said, well, let's, let's, let's get you in East Texas then. Instead of just getting you in that. Because Nacogdoches uh, is great for a Nacogdoches agent. Mm-hmm. But I'm not a Nacogdoches agent. I'm an East Texas agent. You're, and I let cover me show East you Texas. what comprises East Texas, and I'm yeah. willing to do it. And the great thing is, I'll say, do you want to live on a river? you want to live on a lake? you want to live on a small lake? you want to live on a big lake? You like fish? you like to hunt? What do you want? you want to grow corn? we got to get you down south a little bit where there's a little more uh, sand in the soil. To know the difference between uh, iron ore and red clay and, and uh, sandy soil, you don't know that. And they say, well, we're supposed to be as realtors. We're supposed to be resident experts of the area. I know East Texas, and I can t- just tell me what you want, what kind of soil you want. I'll take you to the town that's got that soil, you know, and, and that's the kind Isn't of, that, that was pretty right. darn impressive, everybody watching today? Yeah. Brand new guy, and he says, I'm going to learn my territory. I'm going to learn it well. Yeah. I'm going to take videos. In fact, you got a listing, I understand, because the homeowners saw you showing their property so much in their yes. home security camera video yes. so it's east texas when you our average home price is probably 130 to 160 thousand not not a, not a lot of volume so to do those kind of volume numbers you got to do a lot but yes i had showed this house a couple of times and we were going to make an offer we didn't but i knew there were surveillance cameras which is fine i treat every house that way well i got a phone call and they asked they wanted to meet with me that they wanted me to list their house and i realized what house it was and we sat down and I asked him, I said, how'd you find me? He said, well, we had to Google you to find your number. We found your number. He said, we watched you on video. We watched the way you showed our house. And we were impressed with the way that you, I could walk through a house and tell you again, what the, what's on the floor, what's on the ceiling, what's on the walls. And I'm talking house the whole time. And they were impressed with that. And they said, why don't you sell a house? You know, God kind of took over and we had three contracts in a week. It was $965,000 house. And that's, that's a big house to us. Uh, but Absolutely. It, and that just happened recently again. That's a big house to anybody. <laughs> uh, it, it happened again uh, uh-huh. two weeks ago. Same thing. Clients said, uh, we've been watching you show our house. We want you to list our house. So, And I don't take business from other agents. I don't, I don't do that. Most of these are going to expire. 
Uh, and, and I believe really it is. because you have 360 some agents yes. in your <laughs> contact list. Yeah. They like Art Garza. Yeah. You're obviously a good guy. Yeah. And on that, knowing the properties, I want to throw this in about my dad. My dad built homes when I was a kid. So I built two houses. Uh, so I know a lot about it. My dad would come get me out of school, say, come help me. I need help on a house. So I, I can look at a house and I'm going to be able to tell you everything from what's in the foundation, what's in the attic, what's on the roof. And that's the hardest thing for new agents to learn those things. Mm -hmm. So I always tell them, go do the home inspections. Mm -hmm. Come with me. I'll show you. Go, go learn. You need to know what you're selling. And if I, Wait, if I talk houses, uh, I'm going to know them. You did a really uh, admirable thing as well when you told me that you took the foundation course with mm -hmm. Fred Wilcox oh, yes. and you wanted to know more about foundations, which learning obviously helps us sell. And, um, and you love the course. You learn so yes. much out of that course. So just taking extra education also gives you more self-confidence. Yes. And I, when I finished that course, and of course I drove back and forth, for the course. Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> Let me just thank him again on camera. This gentleman is so loyal to Champion School of Real Estate. He drove from Colleen to Round Rock to get his hours. Then he got his license, was back home, and then relocated with his license outside of Lufkin, 20 miles actually mm -hmm. from Lufkin. He drives in to our Houston campus to take his CE, but he drives home every night mm -hmm. and then comes back the next morning. Yeah. That being said, tell them how many hours of sleep Art Garza needs oh. every, every day. I, I sleep about three or four hours a day. Uh, it's not nothing I planned. It's just what I do. Uh, I'm just extremely well, active I'm and busy. I'm going to expand on that because what he's doing is really pretty neat. He wakes up every day at 4 a.m. He has his quiet time, he said. And then he's at the gym doing cross CrossFit. Yeah, CrossFit. <laughs> and uh, he's exercising and then he is ready to go for the day. He goes to bed, you said, between like 11 and midnight. And then you're up in the morning by 4. And yet, tell them you actually only sell real estate when? What hours? I work 10 to 6. 10 a, I, I went through, I did sit through a course, or one of the Keller Williams courses, and the guy, he was really, I don't remember his name, but he's from Florida. He inspired me. He said, look, you, he said, don't do this thing 24 hours a day. He said, it's not, it's not you healthy. Won't be healthy. It's not healthy. He said, uh, you know, live and love life and, and, and family. And Keller Williams model, of course, is his God family business uh -huh. in that order. Uh, so I kind of hit this pattern I'm on now. And no one, you're not going to do anything before 10 o'clock anyway. Right. I, I haven't had, very rarely do I get a client that wants to look at a house before 10. Unless it's an Art Garza. Yeah, and I'll show them <laughs> if they want to look. I will look at it with a flashlight if you want. But 10 to 6 is, is after 6 o'clock, I pretty much, I, I'll answer the phone and do some stuff. But the 10 to 6 is my business hours. I, I try to work during those hours. And he does answer his phone all the time. And since then, your wife has gone into real Got estate, license. gotten her license, your daughter, daughter mm -hmm. even though she's also a full-time nurse, mm -hmm. uh, son graduating from college, yes, getting his license. So there will be a dynasty taking over that lake country or river or pasture or land or farm and ranch or house or marina. I just am so pretty much, as you can tell, wonderful students. I'm so impressed because art's doing whatever it takes, but he's learning, 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 learning along the way. And, but he's helping everybody in his office as well. So, we have a bunch of people I can see right now sitting in their seat saying, well, Art, how much did it cost you to get going in real estate, to be the superstar you are today, the success you are? Again, can you touch on that as a new person starting that has a lot of time and a little bit of money? What would you suggest for them? You know, everyone's different as far as your financial situation. Of course, it costs what it costs to get through the, the courses, and it's really not that expensive. Um, 
what you said me I, I need to be in three mlss so i'm in three mlss because i cover so much area so that's a, that's a higher than normal cost but what i recommend is get into an mls it's going to going to cover the area you need you know and and then if you have an office or uh, that offers leads take their leads because they'll be cheaper than what i'm buying if you can afford to buy other leads buy them uh the 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 risk you'll take is, is it paying off? At first I would do, I wouldn't change. I would buy a zip code and I would try it for six months. Mm -hmm. If it became profitable, I'd stay with it. If it didn't, I'd move to another zip code. I'd buy another one. Today it's totally different. It's a lot faster today. Today I already know all my zip codes. At first I didn't know my zip codes. I know my zip codes. Now I know, I know which ones will sell. Now, which what do you, won't. okay. That's what I was going to say. What do you mean by knowing your zip codes? Well, the way zip codes work is if you look in one zip code, there's only so much property. Mm -hmm. So if I look in that zip code and I see 25 houses for sale and there's eight agents in there competing for those 25 houses, statistically yeah. numbers aren't good. Go and forward. if it's costing me X amount of dollars. So it's, it's just like play in the stock market. I buy and I move. And I move things. So I'm always shifting my zip codes. I move them around. And I have a couple that are really uh, producers. They're my main ones. But the, the increase in cost has been phenomenal. For me. If you go and buy today, you're just going to say they're expensive. I can tell you they were cheap four years ago. They're not cheap anymore. Uh, if you can afford that. And recently we've had a new agent come in. And I sat down with him and we talked. He had a little bit of money. So he's buying a zip code right now and he's working on getting some leads. Uh, the thing about buying a lead uh, is it'll teach you how, how to work that client and, and prove what you can do for the client once you get them on the phone. Because it's, it's direct one-on-one, -on -one, you're face-to-face -face with them. Well, I love how you're using so much social media for people to get to know you. <laughs> they get to see how much you know about that property. And walking through the house and doing two minute clips of everything, those are nice bite sized mm -hmm. bits of information that they can take in. Right. So, I mean, truly to just be in the business going on your fifth year and have to almost change everything that we put in our textbooks yeah. about how to find business. Yes. You said, I'm going to where the business is, and then I'll have them find me by right. doing all of these different social media outlets, buying leads, doing a video. So yeah. if you were to describe how you felt when you started out, because when you started out in real estate, obviously there is no paycheck until you make it. There is this big four letter word called fear mm -hmm. that as an independent contractor, everybody has. How did you deal with the fear factor and how do you deal with it today? Because we all know 2022 was sort of the beginning of a downturn. It remained with us in 2023. We all feel it in all aspects of business. How does our deal with downturns? How did our deal with fear going into a new career? And, and you know, when you ask that question, you, you've got to go way back. I, I didn't develop the ability to deal with real estate and making or not making money. It started way before real estate. I mean, I went to work when I was 12. I've had a job since I was 12 years old. I've I bought my own clothes and done my own I thing since I was 12. Wow. And not only did I have one remarkable. job at 12, I had two jobs at 12. And I was driving at 12. So I started out working at an early age. Uh, and I know that I know how to make money. And I know how to be successful. I've never failed at anything I do. I'm always going to be successful. Uh, I don't play golf because I don't have time. But if I'm going to play golf, I'm going to be the best golfer in the world. So that's the kind of confidence I brought into real estate. That I'm not going to fail. So if you don't have confidence, do anything you can to, to bring about some motivation. Uh, listen to motivational speakers. Read motivational books. You have to be inspired and motivated. If you're motivated and inspirational, the fear won't exist. Realistically, you still got to make money. Still got to bring it in. But I'm telling you, there's a difference between working with confidence and working with fear. If you're working in fear, it's just you're, I'm telling you, I think you're headed for failure because you've already lost. You already can't do it because you're scared. But I was not scared. 
to do the things I did. And my broker would look at me and goes, I would never do what you just did. And I said, I'm not worried. I have no fear. And it's, it's brought me, I've made more money since I quit trying to make money. I have heard a number of our superstars say that. Yeah. If I quit I trying to make yeah. money, I make money. And yes. I don't set goals. So everybody goes, January, set your goals for the year. And I've never set a goal. And my broker said, why don't you set a goal? I said, I don't need to set a goal. I'll look at it at the end of the year. We'll do stats. I'll tell you what I did for the previous You're going to do everything you know you need to do. Right. And when you do that, at the end of the year, you have met your goal. Yeah. Because you know what you have to do right. every day to make it work. Yeah. You also are pretty darn impressive that you had two jobs at 12 years old. You know how to work. You know how to take care of yourself. And that is really so huge for so many people. Yeah. Yeah. That is just such a story. I'm so impressed with it. Can you tell me what did you do at 12 years old? I had two jobs. One was my neighbor opened up an air conditioner business, so he had a shop, and I would fabricate the air conditioner ducts. Those ones you see in the attic, I would make them. Uh, and then I had That's another amazing. job where I would, uh, I was a big kid at 12, and uh, there was a paint and body shop, and they needed somebody to load the hopper. I'd load sandbags into a hopper while they blasted, did their blasting, so i keep that hopper full. But so it was just physical job, both of them. Do you but remember I, what you got paid? I know what I spent with my first check. I know what I bought. What'd you buy? I bought a Shimano Bantam 10 reel. I was big on fishing, so I bought I bought a little reel. A fishing reel. Fishing reel, the first thing I bought. Uh, and most of them back in that, 12 years old, you can't legally work, so they no, were paying me can't. in cash. <laughs> But I started buying my own things. I'd buy my own clothes. I'd buy my own shoes. I would do the th I'd buy the things I wanted. So the the responsibility of being responsible started at an early age. And when you look at that today, uh, taking care of my money and and today it's a big thing for a lot of new people. I tell them you first thing you need to learn to do is pay taxes when you work for yourself. You better. Don't take that Plan big check. That. Right. So we break Plan everything for that. down. Don't take the vacation. And it just brought about a work ethic that came in my family. I mean, my great grandparents came. I don't, my last name is Garza. My great grandparents settled in East Texas in the early 1900s. Okay. And we grew up from there. And they worked. They came here to work. Well, I can tell you, you work also. <laughs> and when he says he doesn't do goal setting, he didn't really tell you the truth. Because he told me earlier it's going to have his broker's license by June. Yes. So uh, he already gave me that date. <laughs> I set a goal for June. And you will definitely have your broker's license by June. I want to ask you one last question. And that is, if you were to have a talk with your younger self, is there anything along the way that you might have changed in your career path? If I could go back, yes, I would. I would tell you that today I get to watch the sunrise and the sunset. This morning I drove in and I've got pictures of it. It's, it's a beautiful rainbow that came down right in the middle of the street. Wow. And I got pictures of it. Had I been working in that mill, that, that yes. wonderful job with all that money and all those benefits, I never uh -huh. would have seen that. You wouldn't have seen and it. most of us are scared to get out and do what we enjoy. And I've always enjoyed being outside. Uh, and I, I spent 31 years... Uh, of not being outside. And I'm telling you, if you if you'll work for the pleasure and the benefit of just living instead of looking at the money, you'll be a lot happier. You know? Well, on those very inspiring, beautiful words, and I had a visual of that rainbow this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, Art Garza, you are an absolute pleasure to know. I thank you for your business these wonderful five years and the commute that you do mm -hmm. to get here. And I know our students have just learned so much today. Thank you for your business students. Thank you for choosing Champion School of Real Estate. I know like art, once you get your license, you have a lot of choices for continuing ed. Champion School of Real Estate will always give you information that will help your business and help you grow. So good luck on your drive back mm -hmm. to East of Lufkin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I look forward to watching the rest of your career just a 
Thanks to the Lone Art Garden. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.